Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem. We're in Foundry VTT and we are looking at a module today. We're looking at Gambit's pre-made. So in the previous video, we did a showcase of automation of combat, which most things work. There was a couple of little glitchy bits that we need to kind of fix. Um, and that's just some conflicts with some of the different ways that we can animate and stuff. And we just need to kind of tidy those up. But it's why it's really important, especially with the more automation that you have, is to test those kind of things. So, you know, when I'm running this game and my players all make their characters and bring them in, I'm going to be testing every single one of their abilities to make sure it's working as expected, the same as I would with my creatures, so I can debug and fix any of those little things before they commence play. And that sounds like a right pain in the butt. Um, but if they're starting at a lower level, they're probably not going to have that many abilities I need to worry about. Um, and each time they level, if they get a new ability, then I'm going to look at that individually. And again, it won't be huge amounts of new things to look at. Um, the only problem really, I suspect, is going to be where suddenly they get access to a lot more spells that I want to check. But it's all kind of there. We've got all of the automations, the animations, the spell effects and stuff like that. It's just about making sure it's picking up the right bits. But anyway, so we're looking at gambits pre-made in this video so that's right here um now we have got walled template available here i'm going to take that off uh, and the reason why is because that helps do something um i'll come back to it <laughs> i want to show you just gambits pre-made so what the heck does gambits pre-made actually do uh, you'll notice my scene is dark that's for a very good reason so it provides us with let's go to our settings Da, da, da. scroll too far so it provides us with the ability to do a number of different things that we currently not getting from other places so it looks like there's quite a lot of stuff to do here um, but actually a lot of these are just whether you want this option on or not so the reason I initially installed it is because of this you can see here attack of opportunity do we want to use attacks of opportunity my answer was absolutely yes I do that's my whole core reason for for getting hold of uh, gambits pre-made so i'm going to tick yes to that so under here we've got the timeout so this is to do with and it defaults to 15 for gambits this is the amount of seconds that the player has when the reaction comes up or the dm actually when an attack of opportunity is made available it will give a pop-up this is how many seconds that pop-up will stay to give somebody the opportunity to say yes do it or not it's entirely up to you it defaults to 15 here but most of the other midi qol stuff defaults to 30 so it's up to you what you have but i would try and be a bit consistent with it i think 30 seconds is a long time you either want to make it or you don't um, and it's attack of opportunity. If it's taking you minutes to make that decision, you should lose it, in my opinion, just to keep things flowing. I think 30 is the maximum I would have it. I would probably put it down lower than that. Okay, so tax of opportunity. We want those on. Uh, enable counter spell. So we can have that on or off if we want. Uh, silvery barbs as well, which is quite a challenging thing to get working for people. Um, so again, Gambit's pre made will take care of that for us. Uh, cutting words as well. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, enable interception. So this will present an appropriate dialogues for fighter style interception, automate interception application, etc. So again, if that's something you're using, have it on. Uh, poetry and misery as well. Uh, and the bottom bit here is about using identify restrictions so if players get magic items they're trying to identify it you can put additional restrictions in to stop them using some of the common um, built-in methods of doing it because you might want to make that more role play uh, and of course you can put a message that's the default message it says if they try to do that without your permission so the setup of this is really quite simple just so you know at the top here um, we have got this homebrew configuration it just brings up this little one here um, a couple of options that you may have you may want to use or not um, I haven't got any of those on so that is essentially the options for Chris's pre-made but it doesn't just do that it does stuff in the background as well even though you can't see it and this is why I've got my scene dark so let's pick Baldrick here um, now I have dumped into him, I've given him a bullseye lantern for example. Okay, so 
says it here that this requires MIDI, QOL, DAE and sequencer. This has come directly from Gambit's pre-made. We've got them, so this is the compendium. We've got all of your spells, class features. Don't want to end up with everything open. Um, but if we go to items, you can see he's done some specific items here for it. And it, I've used this bullseye lantern. So, why? Remember we've got the torch feature. So when I right click, I get this icon in the top left here so that I can select what he's got. So he's got a torch on, he can wander around, he's got his torch, it's gonna to follow him. Lovely, jubbly. Um, if I turn that off, I can select that bullseye lantern as well. And that bullseye lantern should behave like this, should behave like a torch. So he can now walk around with that and actually use it like a torch as you would expect. Okay, so that's one of the other things that Chris's pre-made does is makes a few things like that, a few of those items work very naturally, very smoothly and beautiful. Um, he's got a hooded lantern in there, he's got a torch in there as well um, and there's a whole bunch of other spell stuff that he's got that yes, we're getting a lot of that from Chris's pre-made but you've kind of got a choice here between the two. Let me turn that off and let me make this scene a bit lighter again. So again, the reason I, I brought this in was um, specifically for the attacks of opportunity. So the attacks of opportunity section, just so that you're aware, it's not just the attacks of opportunity. And we saw that in the combat um, example. So it will um, automate those attacks taking into account any type of opportunity attack so it includes covering things like feats uh pole arm master which we saw working uh the, fen uh, the sentinel feat uh warcaster it takes those into account um some of the fighter uh, abilities some of the spell abilities things like um arms of hadar or hadar depending how you want to <laughs> you know dissonant whispers things like that shocking grasp it takes those things into account to do with that range so let's just refresh ourselves how this works let's just grab these guys uh, and a whole bunch of monsters and shove them into a combat here because again chris's pre uh, sorry gambit's pre-made with things like attack of opportunity if i actually um i'll show you in a minute once we finish this it will not function outside of combat which is exactly what you want. You don't want your characters just walking past somebody in the street and it keeps prompting them for attacks of opportunity and things like that. So it only works in combat, which I personally think is absolutely perfect. Let's um, get all these people rolled. Um, spam, 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 spam. Um, and start that combat. Now, suddenly, the screen is full of these tiles, right? So these are showing the areas of control. Let's call it like that. So moving out of or into those areas is where you're going to get the triggers for those things. So if we move Baldrick over here, because he's got that pole arm, he's got that extra reach. Now, obviously, you can argue about whether he should be able to reach these. Um, it depends on your setting that you've got about how you do your diagonals and your movement. Do each of these diagonals count as five foot or are you going to use that logarithmic um, method? I've got mine as just five. Five foot even if it's diagonal. That's why mine's perfectly square. It's probably not accurate. Whatever. <laughs> as long as it applies to everybody evenly, I don't really mind. So this is his zone of control. So any creature that moves into because he's got Polar Master that moves into that should be affected by his attack of opportunities. Um, anybody moving out of that again should be affected as well. Haley's is much smaller as is Nundro's uh, and these ones as well because they don't have those reach weapons. But you can see these guys have as well. Now this is the really annoying thing is you're kind of stuck with these templates on screen all of the time. And you probably don't want that. You can see, notice that these obviously are bigger for the ogre and the dire wolf because they're larger creatures. That makes sense. They've got five foot reach from where they are, not from the center of their, their body. Um, so yeah, the, we're stuck with these on here 
we can't turn those off you're going to see those zones of control all the time now you might be happy with that and that's absolutely fine so let's work with that at the moment um you reckon it's Soriman's go so if Soriman walks up to here to this dire wolf he can absolutely do that he can make his attack but if he tries to step away you can see the dire wolf is getting that attack of opportunity because he's left that controlled space and of course you can take it or not take it whatever it is and again yeah it's going to continue that attack do everything it needs to blah 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 Soriman gets bitten and of course the dire wolf has now used its reaction so if Soriman moves in and out of that zone and control anymore it won't trigger a second time because we've used that reaction so <coughs> excuse me that works exactly how i would want it to work all right let's move on to our next character which happens to be very conveniently this were rat now baldrick up here he's got his pole arm he's got his pole arm master he should in theory when this rat moves one more square to the left it should thump it's prompting him for his brace um, maneuver if he wants to use it. But he's also got this pole arm attack of opportunity. Okay, so we can, yes, we're going to use this. Absolutely. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, although, because he's got two overlapping things, it's asking him twice. Only get one attack of opportunity, mate. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Just because I've doubled up on some of his skills for testing purposes. So we saw that all happened. As soon as the were at, walked within to that zone, he managed to, um, oh, Baldrick got that a chance, if he wanted it, to make that attack of opportunity. He said yes. The rat now moves out of range, but um, it can't trigger it again because we've already used that reaction. Now, um, let's move that let's move that rat back in. Okay, and then let's reset this reaction on him. Okay, let's say you haven't used your reaction. Thank you very much. And now we want that rat to move out. As soon as we move out of that zone of control, we get that attack of opportunity option again if we want it. It uses his reaction, it makes the attack roll, it inflicts damage. Well, except it doesn't because he's attacking a wear rat that has immunity to non-magic weapons. So, yeah. But he attempted the attack. So all of that works beautifully and that is exactly what this part of the module is doing. And this is the really important part that I wanted from this. When we did the combat example, we didn't have all these templates on. And that's where the next module sort of comes into play of how we can deal with that. So um, without going into um, Chris's pre-made, don't mean to want to go there. I want to go into my configure settings. Um, <clears throat> no, I don't. I want to go into my manage modules because I turned it off for this demonstration. This walled templates, if I load that up, walled templates helps control the visibility of those templates now it's not perfect and i would really like for gambit's pre-mades to have the option of hiding those templates so they're basically invisible that would be really nice that's not what we've got so going into our configure settings if i come all the way down to walled templates here there are some options that this in theory should override what we have going on with regards to those templates so we're still in combat here um, but all those things have disappeared so uh, whose go is it let's move on whoever's go it is uh, is Baldrick's go now so if he moves into range of this were rat and tries to move out again we get that attack of opportunity option pops up immediately for the were rat who can choose to take it or not but we haven't got this what is basically it's visually it's kind of wrecks the whole thing doesn't it having those templates around every single character now, again you may find that is useful to have on there and you like it if you prefer it absolutely fine of course but if you don't like it just as a reminder what we just installed there walled templates which helps you hide those things and you can see my settings here um i actually haven't got anything on but also in here, we can look at some of these um, shapes for our templates. So things like our circle things. So, <clears throat> excuse me. When we look at stuff like Ray, excuse me. <coughs> oh dear, really croaky today. I do apologise. 
or to clear my throat before starting stuff, but uh, it just creeps up on me. Okay, so within this, within walled templates, not only does it get rid of that for us, but we can look at some of these rules around how these um, <clears throat> how these rays and things actually work. So, do walls block rays? Well, yes, they do. Blocked by walls or not blocked by walls, or is it reflected and spread? So I've got mine as blocked walls by now. Um, but what is it? Is it if it's a wall restricts light, does it restrict this spell? So I've defaulted with the no. If you can't move through it, then it's a solid barrier and it should block those spells. Um, see, uh, scale the diagonal rays. So this is where scale rays templates conform with the five by five by five diagonal rule. You can turn that on and off. Um, and there's a couple of options here about the height auto target. But again, we've got the same thing with cone. Um, and we've got the same thing with circle. And we've got the same thing with rectangle here of how we want that to work. So uh, Ray, I've got scale diagonal rays. So let's have a, a play with that. There was a comment in the previous video, and rightly so, that there was a bit of an issue with um, with one of our rays. So uh, let's slap them. Uh, we've got to make it make sure it's his go. Come on. There we go. Right. You're up. Uh, and it was particularly when we were using um, Arganza Scorcher. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, so Arganza Scorcher, as you can see, it's, supposed to, it's not supposed to do that. It's 30 foot long, absolutely, but I can cast it anywhere I want to. Now when it goes diagonal, it's still saying 30 foot, but look how wide that is. Um, and it's actually too wide. Let's just check the spell description, because it does say it's a 30 foot line, 5 foot wide. Uh, discard the previous, thank you very much. But that's not 5 foot wide, is it? It's 10 foot wide. Um, so there is a bit of an issue here. Um, that it, it does that. So, in fairness, so if you look at this dire wolf, oops, a daisy. So if you look at the dire wolf that we're going to target, and move a little bit closer, when we cast that, because it will automatically target things, yeah, 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 yeah. Get on with it. While the template or the colour of that covers a wide area, the actual line itself, you can see there's a square box within there that's pointing directly at this zombie at the bottom right. Now, if I put the template over that zombie, but not that square box, it's not highlighting it as a target. If I move it down slightly, so he's partially covered, you can see He's targeting it. So the square box is what's important, not the the blue template that you can see. So by using that, um, we can actually say, right, we should be technically casting from the center of our thing here. And we can select and see Die Wolf not within, still not within, now it's targeted. So it needs to cover at least half of the square that the dire wolf is in for it to target. So that was one of the comments about targeting. Um, it actually does work. It's just unfortunate that we got the, the, the blue template is bigger than the line and makes it look like it's not correct, but it actually is. Um, my other concern is, and I've had this in automations before, I just need to, uh, I'll cast this and then we'll see what it does, is if you start the template on the character who's casting it, they get hit by the spell as well. Um, so I'm like, oh, do it from here, do it from the edge of the template or from the next square. But actually, we should be doing it from the middle. So let's cast that. We get our animation and everything. It only hit the one person and the dire wolf. Yep, so we, we did all of our rolls correctly and it did not attempt to attack the caster. So that automation has improved over the last lot of automation we did oh, a good few weeks ago now. So as far as I'm concerned, while visually it's slightly confusing, it is actually correct. Now I think we have another one where we have a similar situation. Let's just move on characters. Um, well, I think we had an, we did previously have a little bit of an issue with Nundro casting Create Bonfire. So, yeah. So, where's he casting this bonfire? 
Um, <laughs> so I'm just squealing, squealing. I'm moving the the mouse around, um, and it's changing the shape of that, which it shouldn't do. Uh, but so where is that bonfire going to be? If I put it there, is that actually covering four squares? Is that appropriate? No, it's supposed to be five by five. So if I put it here, uh, let's put it next to a monster. So if I put it here, so on this corner, that is not hitting that ogre. Okay. If I move it across a bit, still not. Still not. But if I put it here, it is. So it has to actually cover that um, that square completely. That's not going to affect. It's not covering enough of that square to hit that dire wolf. If I move it up to here, then yes, it will. And we can cast that and it will work. So there we go. Got our bonfire and we did our damage, etc. So it's just one thing to bear in mind. It does work, but you've got to look where that square is, not where the blue template outline is. So that's a bit confusing for us. Um, but anyway, got slightly off track. So um, looking at gambits, that seems to work absolutely beautifully, but you do get that horrible outline template that's kind of permanently on there. The circle is a bit nicer. Um, but uh, we obviously we don't want that on all the time and unfortunately it does sometimes leave that up there for us but the attack of opportunity works absolutely beautifully and the walled templates again just not manage modules come back to configure walled templates with that installed uh, yes you can do things like hide the borders hide the template highlighting and stuff if you want to um, let's just turn those two on see what difference that makes thank you very much um, we should not get so we're still getting that I was hoping it would actually remove that and I think that's what it's supposed to do but that's not happening the way I would want it to let's go back to Nundro and cast that bonfire again uh, discard the previous thank you very much uh, it doesn't affect this either so those settings aren't actually helping us with this particular problem um, which is a shame struggling to put it in the right place there so i hope that's been useful just to see how that module actually works and what it does for us now again um i haven't got any players on here with silvery barbs and things like that so i haven't tested that itself but you can see that it chris's pre-made covers an awful lot of things but then with gambit's pre-made added on top it gives us a few extra things i really like that bullseye lantern it makes it great they can just wander around and do whatever they like and with things like that directional lighting it's going to work perfectly for us and it integrates beautifully with that torch there we go just walking all over the place whatever we want to do um beautiful Okay, right, that's the end of this video. So we actually covered two modules in there, of course, because we did need to make sure that we looked at walled template that just makes it a bit nicer when we're using gambits pre made for things like that, attack of opportunity. Hope that's been helpful. Uh, in the next one, we will be looking at, well, we've still got automation combat for the, sorry, we've still got the combat demo for the non automated version of our combat to look at, um, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, right. That's it. Take care. I'll see you in the next one.